lesson is going to look more closely at a purely monopolistic firm producing output in a monopolistic market. As we saw in a previous lesson in which we introduced the monopolistic model, the demand as seen by a pure monopolist represents the total market demand for the good being produced. This makes sense because the firm is the only producer. There is no need to draw two separate diagrams as we did in perfect competition, one for the market for the output and one for the individual firm. The individual firm's demand is the market demand. Also in our previous lesson, we illustrated and explained why marginal revenue for a monopolist always lies below the demand curve for the monopolist. This means that at any given level of output, the firm's marginal revenue will be less than the price that it sells its output for. In today's lesson, we're going to explore three different concepts relating to pure monopoly. First, we're going to revisit the profit maximization rule that we learned in our unit on perfect competition and determine whether the same rule for maximizing profits applies to a monopolist. We'll compare the profit maximizing level of output produced by a monopolistic firm to the revenue maximizing level of output and will determine where a monopolist should produce in order to maximize its total revenues instead of its profits. Finally, we will be looking at the price elasticity of demand for a monopolist's output, and we'll see how we can determine over which range of output demand is relatively elastic and over which range of output demand is relatively inelastic for a monopolist's product. Let's begin with the profit maximization rule. When studying perfect competition, we learned that in order to maximize its profits, a firm should always produce at the level of output where the marginal revenue to the firm equals the firm's marginal cost of production. At this level of output, there is no way a firm can increase its total profits by either reducing its output or by increasing its output. Let's look at our graph and determine what the profit maximizing level of output for this monopolist is. First, we have our marginal revenue curve. We can see that marginal revenue slopes downwards and marginal cost slopes upwards, but there's clearly a point at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This point right here is our profit maximization point. A monopolist hoping to maximize his total profits should determine the level of output at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And that quantity right there, we'll call that QPM for the profit maximizing quantity. So the question is, how do we illustrate the area of economic profits earned by a monopolist at this quantity? Now, a mistake that students commonly make, and I'm going to show you this mistake so that you don't make it yourself in the future, is to draw a dotted line over from this point and indicate that this is the price the firm will charge at its profit maximizing level of output. This is a mistake, however, because in, in fact, that dotted line indicates the firm's marginal cost and its marginal revenue at the quantity of QPM. To find the price, we must go all the way up to the demand curve, because as you recall, demand represents the willingness and ability of consumers to pay for a good. Therefore, demand represents the price that consumers are willing to pay. So in fact, the price the monopolist will charge when producing at its profit maximizing quantity is determined by the level of demand for that quantity. If a monopolist charged a price lower than that, down here, equal to its marginal revenue, let's say, clearly there would be a disequilibrium in the market because the quantity demanded at a price of MR is much greater than the quantity the, that the monopolist is actually producing. There would be a shortage in the market at a price of MR. Therefore, a monopolist will not charge that price. Instead, it will charge the price that consumers are willing to pay for this particular quantity, which on our graph is QPM. Let's illustrate the area representing the firm's economic profits at a quantity of QPM. In order to find and calculate economic profits, we must know the average total cost because total profits equal price minus average total cost times the quantity being produced. All we need now is our average total cost because we have the price and we have the quantity that the firm will produce. In order to find average total cost, we'd go up from the quantity to our ATC curve, draw a dotted line over 
and right there on our vertical axis is the firm's average total cost of producing QPM units. The area of economic profit, therefore, is simply the price minus the average total cost times the quantity. And on our graph, it is a rectangle. The blue rectangle on our graph represents the maximum level of economic profits that this monopolist can hope to achieve given the level of demand that it faces and given its costs of production. Any level of output greater or less than QPM will result in a reduction in the size of its profit rectangle. Therefore, by producing at QPM, the firm maximizes its total profits. We can see that a purely monopolistic seller has a better chance of earning economic profits in the long run due to the fact that these profits cannot attract new firms. In pure competition, profits attract new firms. The entry of those firms reduces the price and eliminates the profits. But due to barriers to entry, a monopolist can hope to maintain its economic profits in the long run. Entry into a monopolistic market is blocked. Economies of scale, legal barriers, ownership of essential resources, any of these things might be reasons that new firms find it difficult to get into a monopolistic market. Therefore, monopolists can earn economic profits in the long run, as long as demand for its product remains strong and its costs remain relatively small. Let's move on to the second topic today. Next, we're going to talk about the level of output that a firm would wish to produce at in order to maximize its revenues. Now, we don't typically think of firms as revenue maximizers. We think of firms as profit maximizers. But what if a firm decided that its objective was not to earn the greatest level of profits possible, but to earn the highest revenues possible, even if that meant its total profits would be less than it would be at the MC equals MR point? If a firm had the desire to maximize its revenues, then it should produce at the quantity where marginal revenue equals zero. Now we're going to look at a graph and explain why this quantity is where total revenue is maximized. First, let's identify this quantity on our graph. Look at the marginal revenue curve. We can see that at low levels of output, marginal revenue is relatively high. But as the firm increases its output, the firm's marginal revenue decreases due to the fact that it is having to lower the prices of its output in order to sell additional units. Marginal revenue continues to decline until it equals zero, which in our graph is right here. When the firm's marginal revenue equals zero, its total revenue is maximized. So I'm going to put a quantity here that says QRM for revenue maximization. So what price should a monopolist charge at a quantity of QRM? Well, just like we determine the price at QPM, we can draw our dotted line up to the demand curve and over to the price axis to show the price that the firm can charge at the quantity of QPM. At QRM, excuse me, the revenue maximizing quantity, the firm can charge a price of PRM. As you can see, the price the firm will charge when maximizing revenues is lower than the price it will charge when maximizing profits. But this is because the firm is producing at a greater quantity now. The quantity QRM is greater than the quantity QPM. So why is this the revenue maximizing quantity? And what impact does producing at the revenue maximizing quantity have on the firm's profits? Let's answer that first question first. Why is QRM the revenue maximizing quantity? Well, we need to remember what marginal revenue represents. Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue resulting from a particular change in output. In other words, as the firm, firm's output increases from zero units here at the origin to QRM, its marginal revenue is positive. If marginal revenue is greater than zero, then total revenue is increasing because marginal revenue is the change in total revenue. However, if marginal revenue is less than zero, then total revenue is decreasing. In other words, if the firm continued to produce beyond QRM, its marginal revenue would begin to diminish, would become negative in fact. Beyond QRM, total revenue is falling. 
a firm would in fact never wish to produce beyond the quantity of QRM. The firm's total revenues would be declining, but in order to increase its output beyond QRM, its total costs would be increasing. This means that, of course, economic profits are decreasing. Even a revenue maximizing firm would not want to produce beyond QRM. Of course, total revenue is maximized at QRM. Therefore, any level of output beyond that total revenue will decline. So now let's examine the impact on the firm's economic profits by increasing its output from QPM to QRM. In our particular firm, we can see that in fact at QRM the firm is still earning some economic profits simply because the price it can charge at that quantity is still slightly higher than the firm's average total cost. I went up to the ATC curve, drew my dotted line over, and I can see that the firm's average total cost is still slightly lower than the price. But clearly the firm's economic profits at this quantity are less than they were at the quantity of QPM. The firm sacrificed some profits but it did earn greater revenues. The reason its profits are smaller, however, is that the firm's total cost increased by more than its revenues increased between QPM and QRM. A firm wishing to maximize its profits should reduce its output back to the profit maximizing quantity of QPM. Now the final thing we're going to discuss today is price elasticity of demand for a monopolist's output. Looking at a firm's demand curve, is there any way to determine over which range of output demand is relatively elastic and over which range of output demand is relatively inelastic? The answer is yes. Here's how we can determine whether demand is elastic or inelastic. If the marginal revenue is greater than 1, then PED is greater than 1. In other words, demand is elastic. We'll explain why this is true in just a moment. Secondly, if marginal revenue is less than 1, then PED is less than 1. In other words, demand is inelastic. Why is this the case? Earlier in the course, we explained what is known as the total revenue test of elasticity. The total revenue test, we're going to move up here now, essentially says that if a decrease in price leads to an increase in total revenue, then demand is elastic. PED is greater than 1. This means that consumers are relatively responsive to the lower price. A particular percentage decrease in price must have led to a greater percentage increase in the quantity demanded. Hence, demand is elastic. That's what's happening in a monopolistic market as long as the marginal revenue is positive. If a firm lowers its price between 0 and QRM, demand is elastic because consumers are relatively responsive to the lower prices. As the price falls, consumers increase the quantity that they consume by a percentage greater than the decrease in price. Otherwise, total revenues would not be rising for the firm. The total revenue test also taught us that if a decrease in price leads to a decrease in total revenue, then PED is less than 1. In other words, a particular percentage decrease in price led to a smaller percentage increase in the quantity demanded. The firm's total revenue will fall if this condition holds true. Therefore, price elasticity of demand is less than 1. Consumers are no longer very responsive to decreases in the price. So beyond the quantity at which MR equals 0, PED is less than 1. Demand is inelastic. On our graph, we can draw a dotted line up to the intersection. We can draw a dotted line up from the intersection of MR and the horizontal axis to our demand curve. And we can see that along the demand curve, there is a range over which PED is greater than 1. And beyond the Q RM level of output, there is a range of the demand cur curve over which PED is less than 1. This implies, of course, that there is a quantity at which demand is unit elastic, and that quantity is right where marginal revenue equals 0. So right here, above the QRM level of output, PED 
equals 1. A particular percentage decrease in the price will lead to an identical percentage increase in the quantity demanded. Therefore, there will be no change in the firm's total revenue as it changes its level of output and its price right around the QRM level. Total revenue is maximized at QRM. So this lesson went through three different characteristics of a purely monopolistic market. We looked at the profit maximization rule, which says that a firm should produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost in order to maximize its total profits. This rule is true for any market structure, whether it's perfect competition or pure monopoly or something in between. We then talked about the revenue maximization rule. If a firm wishes to maximize its total revenues, it should produce where marginal revenue equals zero. Because if the firm's marginal revenue is greater than zero, then decreasing its price and increasing its output will add to total revenues. When marginal revenue becomes negative, then a decrease in price and an increase in output will decrease the firm's total revenues. Therefore, total revenues are maximized when marginal revenue equals zero. Finally, we explained how the total revenue test teaches us if marginal revenue is greater than zero, then demand is elastic since a particular decrease in price will lead to a greater percentage increase in the quantity demanded, causing the firm's revenues to rise. If, however, marginal revenue is less than zero, then the price elasticity of demand is less than one since a particular percentage decrease in price would lead to a smaller percentage increase in quantity demanded causing the firm's total revenues to decrease. In our next lesson we're going to look at purely monopolistic markets and firms and determine the extent to which such firms are productively and allocatively efficient compared to similar perfectly competitive markets.